So this is kind of exciting. I uh, managed to acquire a copy, a second copy of La Révolution Française. Um, one thing I almost never do, and I think I've may only have done it one other time, um, is get second copies of games that I already own. Um, most cases, the games that I get, they're usually in pretty good shape. Um, a lot of times I try and get unpunched copies where I can, uh, just because I like to be able to punch out the counters and uh, use my um, counter clipper on them um, to get you know uniform, uh, decent looking clipped counters. So a lot of times I'll avoid games that have already been clipped because um, a lot of times uh, people are using you know nail clippers or or uh, other methods of clipping that aren't um, uniform or as exact as what you can get um, with the uh, organ laminations counter clippers. There we've got the the two models of the deluxe, the two millimeter and the two and a half millimeter um, to use for clipping. Um, so I tend to to prefer games that where the counters either if they've been punched they haven't been clipped or just unpunched, um, and I think in terms of buying multiple copies of games the only other game that I've done that with uh, was with Victory Games the Civil War, um, because the the first and both of those copies that I ended up buying were punched copies but the first copy that I had was missing one counter. Um, which was unfortunately one of the general counters uh, um, for I forget which general it even was now maybe um, Hood or somebody like that so and one of the important more important generals was missing uh, one of the counters and so um, you know I'd created kind of a stand-in a substitute counter using a scan uh, but it was not particularly satisfying so I got a chance to pick up another punched copy of the game for I think like five or ten bucks or something. Uh, it's a pretty cheap game, um, and uh, had that shipped to me, and and that had the counter um, that my other copy was missing, and so I was able to kind of piece together the nicest parts of the two copies uh, to make one complete, nicer copy. Um, so in this case, with uh, La Révolution Française, um, as you can see, I've already got a copy there, and uh, that was a copy that I got for fairly cheap um, considering how much the game usually sells for. I think that first copy I got was 75 bucks and uh, this copy came along uh, at a similar price point and so um, the issues that I had with the first copy was that it was missing um, one of the player aids and the entire random events chart. Um, additionally it was already punched um, but I was able to go in and clip it the counters were not clipped at the time, so I was able to clip those um, with my counter clipper. So it was sort of an incomplete copy that I bought at the time. And so when I saw this copy show up um, at a uh, what I would consider a very cheap price, usually this is going to go for well over a hundred dollars, probably closer to one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, I went ahead and jumped on it just for the chance to have an unpunched copy that has the uh, missing player aid, I think the Royalist player aid was the one that was missing, as well as the original random events chart, uh, as opposed to the, uh, you know, scanned, printed copy that I've got um, in my other copy of the game. So, uh, but fortunately getting this copy was, uh, since it's unpunched, uh, affords me the opportunity to do one of the things that I like to do, which is uh, ramble on in these unboxing videos, um, over classic games. Uh, you know, everybody does unboxing videos of new games because you can get those, you know, right out of the shrink wrap and literally do a shrink wrap video for those. Um, and, you know, those are new video or new uh, games coming out that people can do um, videos for. And, you know, it's just easier to do because you've got a brand new game right in front of you. Uh, for older classic games like these, a lot of times they're punched already and stuff, and there's you know, not as much point in doing an unboxing video of a game that's punched, um, since you can't really look over the counter sheets and things like that. So, um, what I can do here, though, with this, given that this is a unpunched, unused copy, uh, is actually do an unboxing video of uh, an AWE game, something that 
usually you can't do, um, although I did one for Legrand Guerre uh, because that was also also came unpunched. Uh, when I got Europa Universalis and uh, Rossia, in fact, I think Europa Universalis might have been unpunched when I got that, but I didn't do one of my big unboxing videos for it because I think I was too excited um, and ended up punching it all out, you know, as soon as I got it. So, and then Rossia was, uh, I think, half punched, um, so I didn't do an unboxing for that either. Uh, but I'll get to do one here for La Revolution Francaise and. Uh, this is one of my favorite games uh, from AWE. I've played uh, Europa Universalis, and um, also an incredible game, um, but not as easy to play as uh, La Revolution Francaise. Um, this one, you know, I was able to play, I think, maybe over two sessions. Uh, I played it solo. Uh, like most AWE games, it has lots of flaws. Um, the, the rules are difficult to get through. Um, but in particular, it's, it can be up to a six-person or six-player game, but I don't believe that it's very balanced. Um, you know, the, Some of the factions have a much better chance of winning and are much more active in the game um, than some of the other factions. So... Uh, it's one of those where if you got six people to play it, I'm not sure that everyone would be very happy um, with what they're able to do uh, with their particular factions. So, um, yeah, it was great solo. Uh, I really enjoyed um, you know, watching the French Revolution unfold uh, in the game. And it actually, for me, unfolded in a fairly historical fashion, although I was playing with the historical rules. Um, which sort of keep things on more of a historically narrative track. Um, but it actually, things happened when they ordinarily happened and things like that, which I guess is kind of rare for the game. Um, but uh, the I haven't seen any other game that covers a particular topic like this, uh, because this really focuses on a lot of the political aspects of the French Revolution, um, which was largely a political event. Yes, there was um, you know, armed conflict and things like that associated with it, but um, the, the machinations uh, at the highest levels were of a political nature. And um, I think this game does an awesome job of showing that and how the different factions uh, interacted with each other. Um, certainly I don't think any game has tried to do it in the level of detail uh, that this attempts. So, um, you know, there's a number of other, I don't know if there's a number of other, but a couple of other French Revolution games, although the only one I can think of off the top of my head is the, is, uh, Liberté, which is, I want to say that's not like a Mayfair, but maybe a Phalanx Games title or something like that. Um, I guess there's, oh, there's Levy en Mass too, which I think is also French, French Revolution related. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure if those games, um, focus on the political side as much. Um, I don't believe they have, you know, literally six different factions um, that existed at the time of the revolution for players to actually play. So playable factions um, of political factions. So, uh, you know, I'll be curious to see uh, if I ever get around to trying those other games, um, how they stack up to this one. But this one's certainly one of the most enjoyable that I've played. And, um, uh, one of my sort of prized uh, gaming possessions in terms of Grail games. Um, I've only got a handful of others. Uh, I got a copy of Aliens, um, the old Leading Edge games, uh, a copy of Magic Realm, a copy of Dune, and uh, I think those are most of my real uh, true Grail titles. I guess. You could put Legrand Gare up there too, um, although I got mine in the great AWE um, vault gold mine uh, of the, what was that last year? I guess yeah, 2015. Um, the one of the original guys that was part of AWE back in the 90s when they were a, a viable company um, posted on Board Game Geek that they had available um, a limited number of copies of Legrand Gare. And I think Europa Universalis, although not the expansion, and um, Hispania, and Gran Siecla, I think. Um, they had 
copies of all those, which are, you know, most AW games are difficult to find and can cost a lot of money. Um, but, uh, so, you know, the, the price that they offered Legrand Guerre, which was, I think, like $125, was, you know, at least 50% cheaper than you would see it anywhere else online uh, in the secondary market. So, uh, so those, are, I guess, would go up there with my Grail games, too, um, along with Magic Realm. And uh, I guess this one was another one that I added um, just this past year. Uh, Star Force Trilogy, the Soapbox Edition, and Art of Siege, the Soapbox. Um, those are two sort of uh, grail games for me um, from the old SPI Soapbox era, which are hands down my favorite uh, boxes, boxing style of um, any war games uh, that I've ever bought. So, uh, yeah, And then there's Dune, um, and I don't believe I have Aliens on my shelves anymore. I think that's been transitioned into the closet um, since I've largely started to run out of room on these shelves um, for new games. So anyway, let's take a look inside the box at La Revolution Francaise. And as you can see, the artwork on the box, and I think I talked about this in my Le Grand Guerre video too, um, there was always a certain amateurish look to the uh, the AWE covers. You know, they, they would do this collage style um, with lots of kind of poorly sized and kind of grainy and or uh, off color photographs, uh, you know, from the particular historical era that the game represents, um, with then a not very well integrated font or color wise um, uh, title for the game. So as you can see here, the title La Revolution Française actually kind of blends right into the background um, and is almost difficult to read, uh, as well as the subtitle. Um, so. You know, there's just a, a hallmark of AWE in this particular era of the games that have very um, kind of amateurish quality to them in terms of, of production quality. Um, so we will pop open the box, and as you can see, you got some French on here. It is a French company. These were produced in France, Paris, France. Um, so you'll have both English and French on the back. So you got French there. Um, with your component list, picture of the map, title, um, and then there's the English side um, that describes the game. And then the Not Suitable for Children sticker. Interesting to see if anybody under uh, you know, 14 or 15 would be able to make heads or tails of this game. Um, would have been way out of my league <laughs> when I was a teenager, busy playing Blood Bowl and stuff like that. Uh, the, the red, white, and blue dice, um, the other copy of the game that I had, had these exact same kind of speckled type dice, um, but you know, a nice uh, little reference to the French Revolution and the red, white, and blue, the tricolor. Um, English rules, and uh, these look like they've actually been maybe paged through a little bit, but the uh, game itself, um, unpunched and unplayed. Um, you know, as I've mentioned, I think in my and I did a video, a couple of video, uh, I guess, DARs, uh, DAR videos of uh, my playthrough of La Revolution Française, and uh, uh, the rules, um, not difficult once you figure them out, but the organization of the rulebook is just very, very hard to follow. Um, it, it just feels very chaotic to me and kind of seems to kind of jump around um, from concept to concept in the game. So, but just putting things together is the most difficult part. Once you've got everything put together, um, you know, through several readings and kind of stumbling playthroughs uh, through the rules, uh, the game actually makes perfect sense. Um, no, not perfect sense, but sense at least. Um, so it's not a case of the game itself having giant gaps in uh, in the rules or being unplayable or um, uh, not working mechanically. I think the things do work mechanically, um, but it's where the game falls down uh, is in the rules organization, and then in terms of how the game plays itself. Uh, I think there's some real balance issues uh, with the factions, uh, which doesn't have really that much to do mechanically with the rules and how things interact. Um, it's just it's based on what factions can do and what units they have at their disposal, what tools, resources they have at their disposal to make an impact on the game. Um, 
does not feel particularly balanced to me. So, uh, like most AWE rules, though, um, this is basically you can see at the top there, like there's sort of the, your photocopy lines. These are basically photocopied and you know stapled together, um, kind of ill ill stapled together uh, into a, a single rule book. In fact, you can see here in the center. Like the staple didn't even go all the way through in the bottom section there. Um, and these are on A4 size paper, um, as is most things in, in uh, Europe. Um, so that is the rules. Here's what was missing from my original copy of the game, the uh, random events table. And same thing here, this is kind of a, probably a photocopied sheet. Um, that's been folded over. You know, I don't know if the if the French oh, there's the random events too. Um, I don't know if there's if the French version of the game had um, you know nicer versions, and just for the English they had to run photocopies off of a you know translated uh, master file or whatever. Um, but you know all AWE games that I've seen um, have this kind of you know photocopy quality level um, of the rules, at least of the English rules. So um, these are all of your events as you go through periods of the game. You have to you, um, roll for special events to see what happens um, at certain points in the game during each um, era, I guess political era. So you've got. Uh, you know, the legislative convention, the terror, and then wrath. I think these are the non-historical. Um, maybe they're mixed in here too, because I believe director it was historical. Um, and the Prairial Federal First Republic, First Republic, and Thermidor, which is historical. But some of these are there's some of these eras, the political eras that you can have in the game are not. Um, historical and others are. Uh, my play through the game, I played the historical version. Um, and then we have the player aids for each faction. Uh, the royalist one, this was was missing um, from my copy, my original copy of the game. Um, and these are fold over sheets um, that have your different um, charts that you need to play the game and. Some of them, I don't know if these charts um, in the back section are keyed to the Royalists. I know this stuff is here, um, your different turn objectives and things. Um, and I know some of the charts vary by the faction that you're playing, uh, but then each one also has the, the sequence of play on it, which is handy. Um, so each person will have their own sequence of play. So you've got your Royalist faction, um, you got the mountain faction or Montagna in the game, but the, the pieces all have French on them, um, so you'll see the actual French um, for the mountain or the, the mountain yards. I guess is what they called them, the people who were the mountaineers. Um, we've got the Marais, and all these are the same. It's just single um, fold over with the charts in it. Uh, the Gironde. The Foyon and the San Culo. Literally without pants. Uh, these are the guys that wore the red belts or sashes or whatever they were. Uh, then you've got the map, um, and I will unfold this um, after I uh, look at the counter sheets. And we've got three counter sheets in here. And the, the interesting thing about these AWE boxes is they all have this interesting sort of like fold over, like double thick side sides to them. So everything in here is like an exact A4 size, uh, fairly tight fit. Um, but it makes the box construction somewhat flimsy. I think I'm either copied the game. This yeah, like here you can get this um, get this corner. You can see it's kind of blown. So a little bit of glue on that corner right there. We'll, we'll fix that and uh, tighten up the box. Uh, I don't think I've ever found one of those AWE, bo AWE boxes that uh, didn't have some 
issue um, with the box itself, um, which is just a, you know, that particular era, um, you use those sort of fold over constructed boxes like that. Um, but in terms of counter sheets, um, we've got uh, in classic AWE fashion um, some very busy looking counters where they literally put um, fairly complicated, you know, like period artwork and things like that onto the counters themselves. Um, and again, these are double sided. Like most AWE counters, they're also wafer thin. It's hard to be hard to see just how thin that is, but it's probably about half the thickness um, of a typical, like maybe even a typical white core counter that you get from something like GMT. Um, so they are very, very thin. Um, which, and again, all AWE counters I've ever seen uh, were very much like that. So, as you can see, everything on here is in French. Um, so you've got different markers here that go, that mark some of your tracks for the Commune, the Clergy, Coalition, your Economic Track. I think that is the the tour. That's the turn marker there. Um, and then you've got your different faction counters. And also in... Um, typical AWE fashion. You can kind of see some pixelation, um, and these aren't nearly as bad as the uh, um, Europa Universalis counters and map, which was very, very pixelated, both the map and the counters. Um, you just get some, you know, when you kind of look real close, um, you can see a little, little pixelization, which, you know, these must have come off a computer file that they then um, printed the counters for so, uh, but they are like color wise and everything. I think they're they're actually quite attractive. Um, you know, and certainly from a distance, they add lots of color and detail um, to the map, which is pretty cool. Uh, but you know, when you zoom up close, you can see uh, you know, and these actually look good. But you know, you'll get some some weird font stuff going on. Um, the smaller the fonts get. So when you look up, when you look up close, you start noticing little details that, you know, this, yeah, there's, you know, this is from an earlier era, and is a, you know, there's a certain amateurish quality to um, the fonts and things like that. You know, it's like uh, the, the people that probably put this together, graphic design um, was probably not their first, uh, first calling, so to speak, their, or not their, their primary job. Um, and so you get uh, you get things that look um, well like these counters, which are have a certain uh, amateurish look to them, and yet you know still manage to be uh, attractive for the most part. It's only only on that closer inspection that you kind of see um, some of the potential flaws. But um, I do really like the colors and things. And then here, like, are the are the money? You know, the everybody you need money, of course, to do things in the game. And uh, the money's represented um, on these uh, counters here. And uh, one of the interesting things about this game, this copy of the game compared to the first copy that I had, is the first copy included uh, a French copy of the rules, which I thought was interesting. None of the other AWE games um, that have English rules have also included the French rules. Um, so I thought that was interesting that there were... Uh, um, copy of the French rules. So the other interesting thing is that this game uses these counters for the money. Um, but my other copy included oops, I'll dump it all over the place. Included these colored slips of paper money, which uh, I thought was really interesting. Um, you know, I guess it might be, you know, to have the Monopoly money stuff. Um, and, you know, these colors match up to... Um, or do they? No, they don't. Um, I was going to say, I thought they matched up to what the counters actually were, but you can see uh, on the counter sheets, 50 is red, 100 is white, and 200 is blue. And for these, you've got 50 is blue, 200 is red, and 100 is uh, is white. 
Um, but the sort of Monopoly money idea, uh, you know, if you ever actually did play this game with six players, um, the paper money might actually be a better a better choice um, to use than uh, the little counters. Uh, you know, just more fun um, if people get to have actual money, uh, you know, paper money that they can use in the game. So if we put these dice back. And the box was in a little better shape um, with this new copy. Um, so uh, it's always nice to have. If you can replace, you know, economically, like there's no way that I would have replaced the game, uh, you know, with a copy that I'd pay 150 or 200 dollars for. Um, the only reason I I took advantage of getting another copy of this was because of the price, um, which I thought that was so low for it. And what I can do is sell my my other copy. Um, you know, at least make back, probably make back what I paid originally for it. Um, so I'm, you know, ultimately only out um, the cost of the one game. Um, so now we will go ahead and take a look at the map. And here's the map. I'm going to try to sort of adjust my blinds here to let in enough light, but also not cause too much glare. Uh, but I guess I can zoom in uh, where I need to. Uh, so, like most um, AWE maps, this one I actually think is um, a little better looking than some, certainly better looking than the uh, Europa Universalis map, uh, which, from a distance, again, the Europa Universalis map actually looks quite colorful and impressive from a distance, and then when you get up close, you realize, wow, the, the country lines, you know, all the map lines and everything are really jagged and um, computery. You know, it looks very much like a computer file um, that they've printed onto the map. You know, color-wise, it looks great. Uh, Resolution-wise, terrible. Um, so this, you know, there's a little... And it's hard to get too close, but there's a little of that computery jaggedness. Um, so, you know, like the region lines and so forth. But not nearly as noticeable as on the uh, the European or Solace map. Um, you know, and it's, it's a fairly good kind of glossy but thick um, paper stock map. So, uh, but you know, lots of the period artwork and stuff is really good, very evocative of the revolution period, um, you know, for your different tables and things on the map. Um, some are fairly bland, you know, like your your tracks here, I believe that's the, the uh, your uh, reputation of your different factions is tracked there. Over here you're tracking, you've got your uh, order of play, you've got your commune, economy, clergy, and uh, um, national alliances or whatever, your, uh, your diplomatic track essentially. Um, you know, and then just some more uh, period kind of artwork turn track and then over here you've got there's where you keep your money um, there's Paris so that's who you're if you've got your different individuals in Paris you know so they've got this little sort of period map of Paris there with all the different um, what do you call the different sections arrondissements or whatever um, got people in the prison and then of course the old guillotine, that's, that'll be guys who've lost their heads, will be, their chits will be placed there. Just the title. Uh, the map itself uh, is kind of cool, you know, you can see underneath the the names and numbers there. Um, it's actually kind of a, probably a period reproduction map of France underneath there in sort of a lighter font. So you've got all the old historical towns and rivers and things. Uh, you know, none of that has any effect on the actual game. Um, that's all just there for, for show. They could just as easily have done, you know, plain, just an outline of France with a plain background and, you know, colored regions or whatever. And I'm kind of pleased that they didn't do that. Uh, it, gives, it makes it for a much more evocative map and less of a kind of dull, you know, area control typical map with a kind of bland background. Uh, you know, here, like, the red shows the hot spots of where revolution... Um, was breaking out where where the, the rebellion and so forth where the, where problems uh, arose militarily and so forth. Um, 
you know, in each of the different regions is worth um, a certain certain amount of money, and so your 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 different factions will try and control different regions, um, which will uh, you know affect their bankroll. So uh, just a lot of fun. Uh, I've actually been kind of itching to play this again, um, so I might take another shot at it. Although I'm currently busy um, with other <laughs> other equally difficult things to parse. Um, and uh, a little more space consuming. I don't exactly have room uh, to set up uh, La Revolution Francaise, even if I wanted to just take a quick spin through it uh, while I'm learning uh, Battles from the Age of Reason. But, uh, you know, hopefully in the next couple weeks or months, perhaps, uh, we'll get back to this one and give it another playthrough and uh, see um, if it plays similarly to my, my first playthrough. But uh, until then, if you're in more interested um, and learning about the game, uh, I put some videos together, and uh, Callendale on YouTube has also um, done videos of a playthrough of La Revolution Francaise.